All right, guys, keep this short. I had a busy day. Just uh, have to reveal this code to show you that all these spots are coded. When you learn this knowledge at this level, you can literally just predict the future. It's outrageous. So I'm going to explain why today, number 34, Giannis, guided the books to their 34th season win after scoring 34 points. All right. Hey, how are you doing, Gimacho Shorts? Much love. Do you have a YouTube channel that I can promote? Um, I'll happily do it. Hey, Sebastian. How are you, brother? So I coached earlier, and went out for dinner, went out for lunch, uh, worked on my book. So I'm redoing my Queen book. I want to make it an absolutely game-changing book. I've added so much you won't believe. People are like, how have you added more to that? How is it possible? Wait till you read it. Um, yeah, so guys, Gematria Sports has a YouTube channel. So check him out. Check him out. What's up, Tank the Chai guy? And uh, if you can put your link in the comments, bro, put it in the link. I'll put it on my website for you as well. 14 in the life, four likes, my birthday, my dad's birthday. How are you doing, Chigozi? One of the best out there genuine people i would love to meet that guy in person buy him a drink or whatever he wanted he just i have a connection with him he's a really really genuine guy and there's not many these days i don't feel genuine people because we're living in a world full of materialism and fake reality chigozi stay true to himself really really good guy from what i know of him but again i've never actually met him but i get the vibe from uh chigozi that he's a special guy um, Super Bowl prediction, I will be posting that in the next couple of days. Um, I have phenomenal finds. I have a lean right now. I don't want to give it away. I know there's a couple of people in this world that will make a video of me if I say something now. Like, you know what I mean? Like five days before, they'll say, he said that, not knowing what I put on my website. So I ain't going to say anything here. I will be posting it. You don't have to go on there. Maybe the day of the Super Bowl. Uh, when I've made a pick, I'll say, hey, guys, good luck to you. This is who I like, and I'll tell you straight. But I ain't telling you now. I've got crazy fines, and there's one team I like more than the other right now, too early. Too early for me to give you a pick, far too early. So much stuff can happen, all right? You find out two days before, Jalen Hurts, he's out. He's broke his ankle. It's like, oh, well, that's completely ruined my code then. So you've got to almost make your decision right before the game almost. That's why like the night before on my website, the night before I did this most phenomenal code for the Chiefs and Eagles to win. But the days prior to that, I loved the 49ers till I did that code. But my last code was Chiefs and Eagles. So it, it basically comes down to right before, in my opinion. Unless it's a future, it's right before. You, you put everything together, right? That's who I like. Um. Six, like, how are you doing, Philip? I will call you. I finally got a new phone now. I was without a phone for three days. I have a new phone, um, which I'm happy to have. It's actually nice not having one in a in a way because I get bombarded with messages, but I need it for my job, don't I? A few people I told you thought I was dead because they didn't hear from me for 24 hours. My mum was super worried. Tried calling me so many times, and I hardly ever go on things like Instagram. I don't have Facebook. NBA Gematria Reels needs help with subs to get out the work. Guys, check out Gematria Shorts. I think it's a good idea. People told me I should do short videos straight to the point. But you know me, I like to talk. And I don't want to go on TikTok. Oh, glory to God. Come King Jesus. It's, it, don't worry, it's coming. I decoded WWE. It's crazy number of rituals. Yeah, bro, I've done. I, I just did a video about Cody Rhodes winning the Royal Rumble and how he's going to go up against Roman Reigns and how deep that is with him being the American nightmare and how his dad was the uh, American dream, Dusty Rhodes. I did a video about Chris Benoit, a video about Eddie Guerrero, a video about WWE being incredibly satanic with the symbolism and super biblical. I've covered a lot with WWE because I used to be a huge, huge fan, huge fan. Uh, how are you doing, Mastermind? Your streams are fire, bro, but your... Bike streams and outdoor exploring streams are all certified classics, man. Especially your 4th of July stream. <laughs> are you talking, who are you talking about here? 
Chigozi. Tell me why Giannis scored exactly 34, just like you had that in your code. Okay, I'll, I'll go through it now. Roman Reigns, the bloodline, and Sami Zayn, one to eight ritual. Yeah, Sami Zayn's from Syria. He, he connects to the war that's going to come up very shortly. Roman Reigns connects to the Vatican, how Rome reigns. And I've told you, code is the American nightmare because the economy is going to collapse in the US. So you can learn a lot from wrestling. You'll learn a lot from wrestling. Yeah, Chigozi, he, he does lives like on his bike or just cruising around. I never, ever do lives uh, basically outside of my house or my family's house. So here we go. I'll go through this books code. Um, and just just how coded it is. And I've done this so many times. It's it's unbelievable. Like when I used to bet and do player props, the amount of times I called the exact points. Here I said Giannis 30 plus. I didn't say 34, but listen to the code. And, and he got 34. Listen to this. He got 34 right at the death. All right, and I'm going to show you what's really important here, that the code all connects. So the books winning today connected to Diego Maradona and Argentina. And since Argentina won the World Cup, they've been connected to pretty much everything in these outcomes. And obviously, I've got a book about the World Cup. I know every number about Argentina. I said they're getting the final a year and a half ago when Aguero retired at 33. So check this out. Books have a crazy Diego Maradona riddle to beat the Hornets. I've shown hundreds of times that all these pro sports are connected by a code. So Diego Maradona didn't need to be able to dunk for this to make sense. So somebody left a really funny comment saying, well, Maradona had a demon inside of him, probably could dunk. And then I thought, yeah, remember his hand of God where he jumped about six foot in the air and got that hand of God against a massive goalkeeper, Peter Shilton. So that was a valid point. Said Hornets have just won back to back games versus decent teams, but they should lose this. Hornets will drop to 8 21 on the road. Maradona scored eight World Cup goals in 21 World Cup games, 8 2 1. 821 is the 142nd prime, and the Bucks can stay on 142 home losses in January. Just knowing this game at one point in the third quarter, the Bucks were down by six. It was a dangerous game to bet in play because I saw something at halftime, which I'll get into, um, which I just make people aware of. I'll explain why it was a dangerous game to bet in play. Um, there weren't many opportunities, to be honest, anyway. There was like a minute where you could have done it. Maradona scored 34 goals for Argentina. Bucks can get 34th season win. Giannis wears number 34, so he may go big and score 30 plus. I pretty much always get my player props. I've done back-to-back -back with Jason Tatum. When I do player props, I'm rarely wrong. But it's got to be organic with me. I don't want anyone now on my website saying, can you give us a player prop tomorrow? My coding has to flow. It has to be organic. I look at the standings. I look at the records. I go from there. I don't even look at the odds tool after my code. It's just a, a way I do it. Because when you're looking for value and all of that, like the Lakers, their odds scream they were winning. But with the Lakers, there's always wild numbers. All right. But the odds away at the Knicks, plus 110, whatever they were, it was screaming they were winning. 24 in the live, eight likes, Kobe Bryant's numbers, Kobe Bryant day. He was connected to this code. So more 34s. Leo Messi won the Copa America at age 34. And the final was his 34th appearance in the competition. We know Messi, the second coming of Maradona in regards to how they play. Pope Francis is Argentinian, and he became the Pope in 2013. Bucks can become 2013 in the conference with a win. 2013 is enormous, all right? That is the year Francis became the Pope. And I know through previous coding that Francis is majorly connected to Giannis, majorly, all right? When Giannis and the Bucks won the NBA, I was coding the Bucks. Game in, game out. I know the numbers inside out. I know all Giannis's numbers, Middleton's numbers, Brook Lopez, top of my head, mainly Giannis. I know how big 34 is with him. It's absolutely enormous with um, Giannis. Books in Gematria equals 34 as well. Hornets can stay on 63 wins versus the Books six weeks and three days after the Pope's birthday. Hornets stay on 15 wins and the Bucks stay on five home losses. 15 is the fifth triangular number. Kobe Bryant was 
inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame by Michael Jordan on 15-5. And Michael Jordan owns the Hornets. So when I was like, Hornets can drop to 824 in the conference, perfect. That's Kobe Bryant day. That's Kobe Bryant's numbers. I know, In again, I have a book about Kobe Bryant where I cover Michael Jordan quite a lot. And uh, Michael Jordan inducted Kobe into the NBA Hall of Fame, 15th of May, 2021. It's huge as the 15th of May. It's when um, Operation Warp Speed began, 15-5. It's when Claydax was 15-5. Um, Hornets can stay on eight conference wins and eight road wins exactly eight weeks after Giannis's birthday. So for anyone who likes to code and you code sports, whether it's for the fun of it or to win money or you have your own website, you have to know all the numbers for the star players. All right? As simple as that. You have to know all the numbers for the star players. So for the books, you've got to know Giannis's numbers. You've got to know Middleton's numbers. Lakers, you have to know uh, LeBron, Anthony Davis. All right? The, the list goes, you don't need to know Bradley Beal for Washington's numbers inside out, who scores most of the points. You just, you've got to know these things. You've got to know the stars. You've got to know Jokic's numbers. I called him to win back-to-back -back MVPs. Crazy odds. And he did. He won back-to-back -back MVPs, even though he was 41st pick. And that's the age Kobe died. And I know Kobe's numbers are massively synced with Jokic. So, because I know them all, top of my head. One second. So, people sometimes say to me, because they don't, and when I say this, I'm not being rude. I'm not meaning to be rude when I say this. I'm just, I'm just spitting facts. It's what I do on my live streams. A lot of people don't know how to gamble. So I posted the books code and I was, people were probably like, oh God, they're big favorites. What's the point? I, I, I say for months, 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 forget about the money line. Ignore the money line. If you want to bet money line day in, day out, enjoy losing all your money. I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to go a different level to everyone else who gambles. So I say, you bet in play or there's these player props. Giannis told you he'd go for 30 plus points. He gets 34. All right. I had the books to win. Yeah, they want much value. At one point, they were six points down. Um, three times this month, three times in January, I had a big favorite that became plus 600 in play. And they all won because of my code perfectly. So if you take one of them, that's winning six even money bets. If you do all three of them, like I would have done when I used to bet, I would I own crazy money this month, December, November, just pretty much since I've been doing this. But I, I won't bet. You know why I don't bet? If you're new to my channel, watch my old videos. I won't do it. Um, yes, I have the advantage of I have a platform. I have people paying me, so I've got money coming in. And my picks, obviously, there's definitely an emotional connection to them because of that. But if I wanted to be greedy, man, I'd be making treble what I come out with at the end of the month. But I ain't, I'm never going back to it. Lakers game, very scripted. LeBron James, 114. Game goes to 114 points. LeBron scores 114 points. Yeah, it was 114, 114. And Lakers seem to always go to overtime. I think more than any other team this season. They go to overtime. Pure energy harvesting because there's a lot of energy with Lakers games. They're the most famous franchise in the world. LeBron James, the most famous player. LeBron James triple-doubled. The guy's 38 and he triple-doubled. Um, it's just almost comical that nobody's noticing all of this. Like Newcastle, I think they're going to beat Man United in the League Cup final. Newcastle, they're flying in the league. They're in the League Cup final. Why? Look at the squad. The manager's not proven with the top team. Why is nobody questioning this? All right, with Newcastle United. They don't want to, do they? They don't want to. Your opinion on a New York Rangers Winnipeg Jets Stanley Cup final too early, bro. I, I called Avalanche over Lightning 4-2 before that began last season. Perfect code. I haven't looked at hockey this season. I'm th three out of four in hockey this season. I just think there's too many numbers code in hockey. And NBA is my best. Hardly ever get a pick wrong. And you know that. Um, and for about two years now. Hockey, there's a lot of numbers. Like, hockey, 
is different to like basketball. Basketball, you look for the star players. All right. Uh, NFL, you got to look for the quarterbacks. Um, soccer, you got to look for the captains and the top scorers. NFL, uh, NHL, you've got to look at the goalkeepers. The goalkeepers' records are outrageous. That's where you got to look with the goalkeepers, I noticed. Hey, Sideman, just trying to help you here. Alexa Bliss lost again, Mitchell, for a five-time women's champion. Well, Alexa Bliss is not a woman, but, yeah, she uh, she basically performed magic in the center of a pentagram in the ring not long ago with Bray Wyatt. Um who always says let me in referring to demons it's just it's just crazy to be honest you and chigozi are like computers uh we're different chigozi and i i don't think he really focuses on sports he has no interest in gambling or anything like that he is phenomenal at decoding on the spot and phenomenal at decoding um headlines and mainstream media and he, he can do it all right okay let me tell me something to type in okay and he can he can call the numbers instantly, um. So yeah, we're different, but we have a lot of similarities. And I think whatever people say about my giant ego and my arrogance, I think I'm, people are a bit harsh with me on that, because I can be very humble as well. But if I'm very good at summer, I'll say it. If I say this code's incredible, it's because I think it is. All right, that's just who I am. I, I say what I feel. College basketball, Akron beat Buffalo, which is in New York, and LeBron played the Knicks, both the Lakers and Akron won. Wow. Yeah, he was born in Akron, wasn't he? Same hospital as Steph Curry. Um, who's, what's the richest club in the world? If you're on about, what, franchises in sports? Who is it? Is it Real Madrid? Probably Real Madrid, no? You've got to think about it's got to be a soccer team that the most watched sport in the world. Real Madrid, the most dominant team. They're probably the wealthiest club in the world out of all of them. So again, NFL, it's really popular. There's a lot of money in it in the US. I just think all of these franchises are owned by the same Satanists, is what I've said. That's why your Glazers own Man United and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There's a lot of examples. Stan Kronk, then he owned Arsenal and, and the Rams. So they're all in it together. All, all these franchises are connected they're all connected to one another and I, I always give the best example of like wrestling wwe aaw all japan wrestling tna they're all working together and then they, they just have the uh, talent go from place to place they're all in it together like your walmarts your costcos your home depots all of these massive stores office depot you think they're separate they're not. They're all owned by the same group of people. Your TV stations, all owned by the same group of people. This is the issue, and it's Satanist. You can say uh, it's Masons and Jesuits, okay, whatever. They're, they're clearly part of the occult, but it's by Satanists. That's it. Um, so Real Madrid are the highest. There you go, then. Oh, in the NFL? It, it, guys, it's hard when you say football with me. Um because I've got people who support my work from the US, Australia, England. So when you say football, do me a favor and either say soccer or say NFL. So the richest NFL team, it's hard to say. I know the, the Roonies have a ton of money who own the Steelers, but they all have silly money at that point, don't they? Um, Cowboys, yeah. It's hard to say, isn't it? Because this supposedly that limit in regards to finances, the fair play and all of that in a lot of sports. So I don't know how significant it is. If you're talking about the owner, it's all dependent on how much they're allowed to invest. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think it matters. It's the code. It doesn't matter who has the most money. It's the code. Um, hello, Adam. Just noticed Arsene Wenger, Arsenal, Jurgen Klopp, the cop stand, Mancini, Man City, absolute mockery. Yeah, they do a lot of mockery names to a point where I'm not even sure if a lot of them were born with the names that they were born, to be honest with you. You can say maybe they've changed them with Gematri or mockery. They definitely make stuff up with uh, headlines in the media, like the news reporter reporting a gas shortage and his name was Phil McCann. Um, 
stuff like that. They do, they do a lot of that. But yeah, it's it's outrageous. Arsene Wenger and Arsenal, the greatest ever coach. It's it's almost comical, to be honest. From September the 11th, 2001 to the start of the final is 21 years, 270 days. Rangers can get 270 playoff wins if they win the cup. The Jets, 12th season, and they scored 2-2-3 in the first season. Looks good, mate. It looks good. If you're feeling it, keep going with it. Keep an eye on it. People have no idea how hard it is to call the future. It is very hard. Um, but if you're feeling it, trust it. Watch what's playing out. But if you do bet, Agent D, I'm not sure if you do, don't get it in your head that that is going to be the Stanley Cup final. Don't get that in your head. There's so many teams. How many teams are in the NHL? 32? Just like the NFL? What's the chance Jurgen Klopp, the cop, stand in Anfield? What, what's the chance that Jurgen Klopp, the three teams that he's coached, all have the same anthem of you'll never walk alone? Mans, you'll never walk alone. Dortmund, you'll never walk alone. Liverpool, you'll never walk alone. That's why I said if these sports continue, he will end up at Celtic. You'll never walk alone. All right? That's what will happen. And Klopp did seven seasons with Mans, got relegated in his seventh season. He did seven seasons with Dortmund, finished seventh in his seventh season. And in his seventh season now with Liverpool, he's having a nightmare and go back and watch all my videos where I said Liverpool will have an absolute shocker this season. And won't win anything. And they'll probably finish sixth or seventh. You can go back and watch it all. I said top two would be Man City and Arsenal. They're the top two. I just said it would be City over Arsenal. It still could be. My FA Cup pick's looking great. I'm not going to tell you it, but I've got two out of three of the last FA Cup winners from the beginning. Um, I think this one's going to hit as well, to be honest. But again, long way to go in that FA Cup. Long way to go. How do I start learning Gematria recommended resources? It's hard to say this without plugging myself. The best place right now is my website to learn Gematria. I've got arguably some of the greatest decoders that I'm aware of in the world that I've come across there. I have three books about Kobe Bryant, the death of Queen Elizabeth, which I predicted two years before she died, and the FIFA World Cup. I would purchase them from me next to nothing. I'd do a month on my website, and if you like it, stay. And if you don't, leave. I, I'm not even really going to go out. There's, there's a guy called Decoding Oz on Twitter who I really respect, and he codes very similar to me. I'm not saying he's copying me at all. I think he's phenomenal. That's a guy I would promote. Chigos is great and a good personality. But there ain't many. Like on, on YouTube, there's not many. There's next to none very good people teaching this knowledge who are actually in it for the right reasons and not delusional. So it's very hard because Gematria is pretty like um, recent for a lot of us. There's not tons of books on it because it's it's sacred knowledge. It's hidden knowledge. Um, it's Jewish mysticism. So they don't want everyone becoming aware of the code like I am. But I think honestly the best place to learn the code is my website. What I do every single day is outrageous. Uh, it sounds arrogant, but it is. You have to go there and know. If anyone's on my website right now in the chat, do me a favor and just give me your opinion of that website without me having to plug myself. Um, Winnipeg Jets' first game this season was against the New York Rangers. That's very interesting. You've got the Jets as well, which connects to 9-11 with New York. And Brady's first ever game in the NFL was against the New York Jets. And then shortly after 9-11, he won the Super Bowl with the Patriots right after the Patriots Act was signed. So you might be on something with the Jets and New York Rangers. Um, so what I would say to you, Agent D, is how, how good is your knowledge of 9-11? First of all, I would do some spans. I'd go from 9-11-2001 to when the uh, Stanley Cup begins. I'd do the anniversary of 9-11 and the upcoming anniversary of it. I would see if there's any 9-11s in the records, if there's any 156s. It's 9-11s, 156 prime. Look yesterday, 
the Nets were plus 150 in play. Started off minus 400. Straight away, first quarter, they were 15-6 and 18-6. I knew it was game over. I let my community know. Watch my video on it. 9-11, 156 prime. Coronavirus declared a global pandemic exactly 18 years and six months after 9-11. So it was 15-6, 18-6. My whole code was about 9-11 with the game being in Brooklyn, New York and the 3-1-1-9 phones in the 44th prime record for the Nets. And 9-11 occurred 3,119 days after the uh, World Trade Center bombings in 1993. It was just perfect. So you see it? Donny, thank you so much. This guy is one of the most genuine, nicest people that I know. He'll do anything for his mum. So basically, he's a guy who gets more pleasure out of supporting people financially than supporting himself. He always sends me super chats. He's incredible. Number one fan. But more than that, he's just he's a really good guy. So when he makes money, he straight away goes, yeah, I'm, I'm going to treat my mum. I'm going to go treat my mum. Uh, she recently had a surgery and her leg's a bit messed up. That that gives me chills, things like that. Because there's a lot of people with money, they make money, and I'm going to go buy a watch. I'm going to go, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do that. He's one of those people who thinks, right, who can I treat with this money, with this extra money? So he throws me that $10. He don't need to do that. He's one of my best friends without me actually meeting him. He knows that. Um, but he always jumps in. I say, you don't have to send me any more money. Stop. And he's like, no, if I want to send you money, I'll send you money. <laughs> it's so funny. It's the guy who gets those candies from uh, Japan, and he sends me five-minute videos of him opening them, all excited. This weird-ass candy and weird drinks. But he likes them. The Carolina Hurricanes also have some good riddles. The last two teams to win the Cup were weather-related teams. Yeah. Well, you had the Avalanche against the Lightning, didn't you? And then the Lightning before that went back-to-back. And they say lightning strikes twice. That's why I was like, they're not going to win it three times because lightning strikes twice, not three times. And the Basilica got struck by lightning twice in 2013 when Pope Benedict stepped down for Francis. That was God for me saying, hey, something's not right here. Warning, warning the believers with that. You could say it was Satan because it was cast out of heaven like a lightning bolt, Luke 10, 18. Um, I have a feeling Lakers lose the next road game because there'll be 11 17, 187th prime. Enormous number. Enormous. I don't know who they've got, but I'll look into that game. Do you see Newcastle catch up with Arsenal in the Premier League? No. No, but I think they'll win the League Cup, Newcastle. I think they'll upset Man United. But no, they ain't they ain't winning the league. No. Um Top two will be Guardiola and Arteta, like I said at the beginning. Remember, Arteta worked under Guardiola as his number two at Man City. Um, I don't think City win the league only because they will become 4-2 in the last six Premier League seasons. The biggest thing that Arsenal have going for them is the Queen riddle, but Pep can go 4-7 um, Premier Leagues. And 47 is just monumentally huge. Argentina won the World Cup. They've won 47 World Cup games now. Uh, the US about to have its 47th president. The Freemason Compass is set at 47 degrees. Vatican City was founded. 211, 47th prime. Basilica struck. Um, Lightning struck the Basilica. 211, 47th prime. There's way more. But he has the potential of the five and six, which is enormous. Anyone who knows Gimacchi knows the importance of 56. If City win it, um, they'll go five and six under Guardiola. And France, by the way, have got to four out of the last seven World Cup finals, another 47. But beginning of the season, I did say Man City win the league, uh, Haaland, Golden Boot. Haaland was plus 450. Big value. People said, he's going to take time. He'll need to settle. I don't think he's going to adapt. I was like, you don't know his numbers. Haaland, Golden Boot. He's practically got it already. All right? It's not even February and he's basically won it. So I know a lot of people took that um, in my community. They may have took City as well, but there were no value in City to win the league at the beginning. They were minus 300. 
So I don't know if many people took it. I would put a little little bet on City now, not big, because I, I know all the Arsenal numbers. Um, but at this point, Arsenal are going to drop points, guys. They'll drop points. I won't be shocked if they drop points against Everton with the new coach. That'll be a low-scoring game, in my opinion. Darrell, cheers, brother. Also taking my lady friend to a professional lacrosse game Saturday night. Also, so winnings will be spent nicely. That's outrageous, mate. Let me ask you, why are you going to go watch lacrosse? I didn't know you liked lacrosse. Like, I think lacrosse is a pretty cool sport, isn't it? It's it's pretty much similar to... Um, it's got like a combination of somewhat of like football and hockey, the way it is, the transition of it, the vision that you need to have, uh, the goalkeepers and all of that. Um, lacrosse is a physical sport, isn't it? It's it's a physical sport, lacrosse, because I lived in the US for seven years. I'd go watch high school games when I used to coach the kids. Some of them played lacrosse. My word, they're, they're athletic, but it's not a popular sport, is it? I've been seeing a lot of 129s dealing with electricity and power. Didn't the Lakers just get 129 points? And um, is Newcastle the richest football club in the world? Well, we've got those wealthy Arab owners, same with Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, I don't know how you define wealth. What they consider, is it just that of the owner? Man City have the wealthy owners as well. Or is it merchandise and ticket sales and all of that stuff that they take into consideration? I don't know. Like The actual wealthiest uh, owner has to be probably PSG's. But Real Madrid, I think, historically are the wealthiest club. But again, they make up numbers. But anyway, Durell, I want you to say hi to your lady friend for me and whatever goes on in that lacrosse game. I hope you enjoy it. You're going to do a Champions League decode? Yep. Yep. Premier League is my bread and butter. Excellent. Again, I rarely get a Premier League game on. The hard thing about soccer is there's three outcomes. That's what makes it harder than all the other sports. The three outcomes. Um, I used to really love decoding the Premier League. I just it's it's still hard for me sometimes because I was a diehard Man United fan, diehard Premier League fan. Part of me just don't want anything to do with it anymore. But I know there's people in my community from England who are still really fascinated by it. So I put out codes. I don't always put them out, but when I do, they, they pretty much hit on, on the nose. Donnie, stop with this now. You can text me on WhatsApp, all right? Um, just covered my tacos tonight. I, I took um, I took Betsy out, my ex-wife. We had a good chat. We meet every now and again. We've got an amazing connection, still always will. Um, so I treated her to some tacos. They were unbelievable. Let's read out this comment, baby. I've always wanted to go to a game now. My city has a pro team and my friend has never been to the arena that they will be playing in, so she's excited. All right. Okay, love that. How how big's the stadium? Because it's not a, a well-watched sport. Like, is it a few thousand that are going to go? It's not going to be tens of thousands, is it, to watch a lacrosse game? It's probably a few thousand max. Um, does Bexy live in Mexico too? Bexy, yeah, yeah, about 15 minutes away from me. Just started watching your channel this week, very interesting. How do I learn? I appreciate that, Adosa. Um, that means does Adosa mean pink in Spanish? I think it does. Adosa, pink. Um, again, without having uh intentionally promote myself the best way to learn is my website um you'll learn more there in a month than you probably learned in your life and that i ain't just taking all the credit i do all my posts loads of stuff there's the community like loads of people on my community today posted the miami heat to upset cleveland and they were plus 180 and they did but on my it depends what you want to learn rosa my website will teach you gematria numerology symbolism astrology Biblical scripture. Um, there's a lot of humor there. Um, what else do I cover? Oh, the, 
tactically everything going, mythology. So it depends what you want, what you're wanting to learn. Are you wanting to learn the code? Are you wanting to code sports? Are you want to code your own life? Are you want to see through the illusion? I do codes for celebrities and I call out the mainstream daily to help people not get caught up on it. It depends what you want, but I cover it all, to be honest, or at least my community does. Uh, know the flower rose. Okay, beautiful. Every rose has its thorn. Uh, who doesn't love roses? I love the chocolates in England called roses. Yeah, I, I would recommend any of you, honestly, at this point, without being a jerk, financially, I'm very comfortable. I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm not rich, never will be rich, never would want to be rich. I'm comfortable. So anytime I plug the website or my Twitter, it's to help you. If you're sending me ten dollars, yeah, it's so worth it. Like beyond the joke, worth it. But I ain't getting you there because I want your ten dollars. Um, and I don't mind any time anyone cancels either. It don't bother me anymore. But best place to learn knowledge and and be part of an incredible community during this incredibly strange, surreal time. I I can't believe that I don't have like thousands signed up, but that's fine. It's more stress for me, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm i probably going to limit it, like I've told you anyway. Uh, my life don't care about actors. Good. That's phenomenal. But remember, the world's a stage. We're all somewhat actors. Um, the world is a stage. But I, 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 co- I cover so many things, all right? Can you, can you tell me how you found the illusion? It's one of my favorite questions for me. How did you find my work? Most people just say, I typed in the NFL is rigged. Did you find it because of the calendar? Did you find it because of sports? Did you find it because of the Bible? Oh, my word, he's back. What a guy. Um, The venue hosted a public ribbon cutting on October the 26th, 2019. October the 26th was Michael Jordan's debut um, in 1984, the year LeBron was born. As big as that 1026. The first event held was a 21 Pilots concert on November the 8th, 2019. All right. So obviously, it's a decent-sized stadium if they're hosting that band because they're popular, aren't they? 21, we know how big that number is in Jumatu. 21 Pilots. Really? I bet they told you they came up with that name. Not a chance. Nothing wrong being rich. Just don't be obsessed with money. Be rich in knowledge and faith, baby. Brilliant. Absolutely nothing wrong with being rich. When people judge people for having money, I've never understood it. If you're obsessed by money and you're looking down on people, all right, and you're doing certain things to get money that you probably shouldn't be doing, then yeah, you have an issue. I know a lot of rich people who really barely spend money. They had a beautiful house, but they weren't bothered about clothes and watches and fancy cars. They had a nice house in a nice neighborhood. So being rich doesn't make you a jerk, which the stereotype is. I like It's like girls, if you're pretty with blonde hair, then you're dumb. It's such a silly stereotype. I, I make, I don't, again, who am I comparing myself with financially? If I compare myself with all the people I know in LA and Chicago and Colorado and London, they're killing me financially, <laughs> ruining me. If I'm comparing myself with somebody working nine or five in uh, Walmart, they'll probably think that I've got a lot of money. It always depends who you're comparing yourself with. Um, but I, I know at this point, even if somehow I became mega rich, it won't change me. It won't at all. It just makes you live your life a little bit, oh, well, a lot more comfortably. But when this economy crashes, it... it it won't mean too much, will it? But the win today, Giannis has an all-time regular season of 388.308. Okay, 388 wins, 308 losses. If you read alternatively, 308 losses, 388 wins. LeBron needs to reach the minute of 388, 388 points to pass Kareem. Wow, geez. This Rock for Ages is special as well. Rock for Ages, when do you reckon he does it? February the 7th, February the 9th, or February the 11th. He got another decent amount of points today. When do you think he does it? He's either going to do it 2-7, which is two years after Brady won Super Bowl 55. 2-9 is 
strong possibility, really strong possibility with the code. And then two 11s against the Warriors. It's one of those three dates, isn't it? Illusion, first time I watched your work was the Premier League from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. It's fascinating. Thank you. I appreciate that. I found you after AJ Roberts' show. I've joined website. I know nothing about sports. I'm caught with numbers. But I love watching your videos. Absolutely mind-blowing. means a lot. I think AJ Roberts is a, an amazing human being. And I've only spoken to him once. Only spoken to him once. So he contacted me about doing a podcast. I, I, I looked into him. He seemed really genuine. We, we did the podcast. It was great. Um... I'm going to meet him in England. I think he wants to do like this tour with me because I've been offered a few. It's crazy thinking about it, but because I'm just still adding to myself, like this whole illusion stuff. I, I often forget that I have a YouTube when I'm not staring at the screen now, when I'm out and about. So people, when I'm in England, they know I'm going there and I get contacted like, do you want to like do an event? Do you want to give a talk? And all of this stuff, I'm going to do it with him. Because he goes around England, doesn't he, talking. He's very influential and very inspiring with his words. Um, so him and I are going to do a few of those. If I have the time, anyway. But he's a great guy. I'm glad that you found me through his work. I, I have to drop him a message soon, again. Yeah, AJ's fantastic. And I know he likes what I do. He, he, he retweets my work a lot. We have one, and I don't even think he's aware of it, and he might not like me for saying this. Um, he's really close. You'll probably know. I'm not going to say this guy's name. He's really close with an ex-Premier League player, is AJ. And I believe that ex-Premier League player, if you're watching AJ, this is just what I believe, nothing against you. I believe that ex-Premier League player is completely controlled and he's conning people and he, and he's, he's controlled opposition. I believe that hand on my heart, that's why I don't want to talk to this Premier League footballer. Um, I could be wrong, but that's the only thing where maybe AJ goes, oh, oh well, I disagree with that, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing with people. You can still like them. You're not always going to agree. But he has a close friend who I think he wants me to chat with and all of that. I don't want to chat with the guy because um, it don't feel right to me. Things in my life at this point have to feel right. And back in the day, if someone said, hey, you want to chat with a Premier League footballer? I would have been, oh, my God, yeah. Now I'm, I don't give a shit if they've won a World Cup. I don't care. Uh, if they don't feel right, I ain't talking to them. You know what I mean? Like... Like that um, video game that said we'll pay you anywhere between $100 and $5,000 a month to promote our video game. I rejected it. Why? Didn't feel right at all. I think a year and a half ago, I would have taken it all day long and taken the free money. I said, no, I ain't doing that. So it's got to feel right. That's the only disagreement that I have. Well, it's not even a disagreement. I just know he likes this person and I, I just, something don't feel right um, about the, the guy. You see, no, it's loan from Arsenal 13, Mitchell. No, I haven't been. Did you see Newcastle? Let me double check that game finished 2 1. It probably did from what I saw. Yeah, so you see how Newcastle went through 3 1 on aggregate on the 31st day of the year? They do a lot of stuff like that. So 3 1 on aggregate, 31st day of the year. Just a joke. I said before the season began, Southampton are getting relegated with the code I did. And they're the saints. And I talk about the beast. It's going to basically rain. And it looks like they're going down. Called so much already in that Premier League. But it's not done. Again, I said Man City League. Haaland, Golden Boot. Um, Liverpool to finish 6th or 7th. Southampton to get relegated. Um, I think I said Man United top four. So it looks like nearly all of them are coming. Maybe not Man City League. Lakers play OKC on the 7th and Milwaukee on the 9th. Yeah, that's it. Because Kareem played for Milwaukee and the Lakers. 
So I don't know if that's too obvious, but the code for the ninth is outrageous. It'll be an anti-climax if it's against Oklahoma, but the way LeBron's playing, that's that's going to be the favorite now, like significant favorite. But if they sit him out a game, if he gets an injury, they can do anything. This is what I'm saying. I really hope it's 2-9. But whatever it is, Summit Major is going down. Summit Major is going down around the Super Bowl, which is exactly when LeBron is going to be basically becoming the number one all-time point scorer in the NBA. Summit's going on very soon around the Super Bowl and LeBron breaking that record. Him breaking this record is going to result in something massive. Massive. He often gets called the beast, LeBron. Summit's going down. I just don't know the exact date. Yeah, he plays the Warriors on the 11th. 2-11, which is the anniversary of Vatican City being founded and Basilica being struck. If it's that, that'll be very interesting. Because LeBron was born in 84. And the Basilica was struck twice by lightning exactly 84 years after Vatican City was founded. That's so biblical. So those who say it's man, that means 84 years, 84 years before, 84 years before they had a plan to make sure that Vatican City was founded 211, 1939, and then to ensure 211, 2013, exactly 84 years later, that um, the Basilica was going to get struck by lightning twice. You think that they've managed to have that plan organized all the way 84 years before for it to be fulfilled. It, that's why you have to just start going, no, this is deeper. This is biblical. This is coded. This can't be man because it goes too deep. And as I tell people over and over and over again, the better you get, the more you see it's not man. The lower level coders all right, we'll tell you it's the Jesuit Order and the Masons. That's low level, like Joseph Aquaviva, telling everyone it's Jesuits, Zach Hubbard, Jesuits. All right, it's comical. And you're seeing now, you're seeing now, ex footballers coming out in the NFL saying, this, this made me laugh. Someone tagged me in it. It's got about a million views. That. Every single game week, they rehearsed the script in practice. And who told you this a year ago? They're going to start coming out saying it's all corrupt and it's all scripted by man and it's all technology. Told you a year ago. Because they don't want you to know that it's supernatural. That it's God. So they're going to start telling you it's the referees. It's the players, it's VAR, it's technology, it's Vegas. They're going to really start pushing it now. So the people who are unaware of it are going, I told you, I told you it was all corrupt and it was all Vegas. Yeah, it's not how it works. You've got to, you've got to be 20 steps ahead. You can't think like the average person in this world. You can't anymore. So, again... Man's aware of the code. I'm aware of the code. You guys are. You guys are aware of the code. I am. There's different levels. So there's definitely man completely aware of the code a million times more than me. There's people walking this earth a million times more aware of the code than I am. A different level. They're the people who are right at the top of this pyramid because they're aware of the, the secret code of the universe. That's what Tesla was raving on about. We always go about 369. Yeah, what does that mean? They know what it means. They know that 3, 6, and 9 gives you a key to the universe. They know that. We don't. I know how to code sports games daily and almost get everything right, make a few major predictions, see through the mainstream media. All right, I can do all of that. These people have a different level of knowledge, but they're not controlling the code they have godlike complexes but they ain't controlling the code they won't control their final destination at all so it's very important that you know that
or at least consider that. Yeah, yeah, they have tank the chai guy. They're all raving on. Oh, the Bengals should have been in the Super Bowl if it weren't for the referees. So they're banging it out. Like I said a year ago, they're banging out. They're blaming VAR in soccer every other game now. All right? I see what they're doing. And again, the better you get, you realize there's absolutely no way that they're scripting this in training. I've watched pro clubs train. Man United, Barcelona, all right? Multiple ones, Bradford City. They, they basically play five-a-side, guys. Have you any of you ever been? They play five aside, they do a bit of cardio, running around the field. It's comical. They play five aside. I, I was at Bradford City when I was younger. They're not sitting down and talking this and talking that. And you can. I've told you what if players get injured to say, Adam, you're scoring two goals this Sunday. What if I snap my hamstring the day before in practice? Well, they don't usually train the day before, two days before. Then what happens? Come on. I, I'm the, one of the only few people that are not just blaming the Jesuits. I used to because I got brainwashed by people. I'm one of the only people on YouTube that is not blaming man. I believe they're, they're, they're demonically possessed. They work for Satan. But I ain't giving all my power to them thinking they're behind the code. Not a, not a chance. If they had all that power, we wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't even be doing this live stream now. If these people had all the power everyone thinks, I wouldn't be here doing this. You wouldn't be watching this if they had all that power and they could take us out and nuke us all. They can't. This is a universal law. Chiefs game, they were obviously making the refs look bad by design because my phone's going. They know that Bengals Chiefs game, which I told you the Chiefs would win, and I said it ago at the last play of the game, and it did. And I mentioned the score 2023 20, before the game, and it finished that score. So the Bengals lost Super Bowl 56, 2023, 20, and lost their opening game of the season on 9-11, 2023. 20, and then they lose against the Chiefs, 2023. 20, so they knew there'd be millions of people watching that game. So it's Mahomes and Burrow, two of the best quarterbacks in the world. And they intentionally made the referees look horrific all the stuff I've been saying. That game was finished in 2023 and it didn't matter who was reffing it, all right, who the owners are, how much money Vegas lost. It was finished in 2023. Simple as that. The way it played out, that's how it was going to play out. Simple. The media can definitely do things. They can lead you a certain direction. They can push a certain narrative because they know how that works. They can get the majority of people to think it's going that way, and then boom, and then they flip the script. They ain't flipping any script, but they're misleading people, but they ain't flipping a script. Cody Rhodes was winning the Royal Rumble, no matter what. It's some weird thing within this universe. There, there's got to be some that knows what's going on. Again, whether it's supernatural, God, supercomputer, whatever you want to believe. Everything that's happening seems to somewhat be predetermined, especially uh, when it comes to anything you're watching on your TV. Entertainment. Van Dyke looks like a mum of five. Van Dyke does. Give Van Dyke a pair of tits. All right. It does. It, look, it looks like a, a mum. Van Dyke. Dyke means lesbian. All you're going to see is Van Dyke's muscles. I have to do more videos about FTMs. I'm going to. I'm going to show you. Not celebrities. I've done so many of these. I'm going to show you FTM transitions. And you're going to start believing, geez, maybe Van Dyke was a woman. I'm going to show you with real people. All right, you don't want to believe that Van Dyke's a woman because he's such a good footballer. Again, study demonology. Study how demons can possess a human vessel. Then you'll see it doesn't matter if you're male or female. It doesn't matter. If they possess you, they can make you the best center half in the world. 
they possess you, they can make you the fastest man on the planet. If they possess you, they can have you speak 10 different languages and star in any movie like DiCaprio. Because they can do whatever they want when it comes to talent on the world stage, a demon. Human being can. Yes, there's people more talented than others. But this out of this world talent that you always hear of, these people are possessed. Ronaldo jumping higher than pretty much any NBA player when he won that, when he scored that header. Only a demon can do that. You think he's that gifted? Did you see that goal? Anyone see that goal? Anyone see that goal of Ronaldo where he jumped about seven foot in the air and headed it in? Or what LeBron's doing right now at 38 and how he never gets injured because demons don't get hurt physically. They only get hurt spiritually. I knew the Bengals were losing the split second that their senator made that Burr head video. Nice. This is what I mean. What the media will do, my phone's going crazy, so I'm going to have to go in a moment. The media are really good. Like for this community of Gematria, they will put so many narratives now for the Eagles and the Chiefs. All right. And you'll code whatever headline that you want to code. Um, and it's almost like the universe or whoever's behind it, they do that. These major games are the most ridiculously double coded you'll ever see. I have my lean right now. Um, I said this whole Super Bowl from the beginning will be about revelation. And I'll show you whoever wins it, it will be revelation. But there's one team that has more of a connection to revelation. The whole Super Bowl is going to be about revelation, economic collapse, and a major disaster. All right, that's what's going to happen. Economic collapse is inevitable. Everyone will say that. Yes, it's on the cards. We know that. Um, a major, major event is going to go down. I think there's going to be a power outage soon. I don't know the exact date. I'm going to stop going exact dates soon. And the war themes have been just off the charts. The war themes. That's why uh, Joe Biden is the commander-in-chief, the Chiefs. You've got Wentz who left the Eagles to go to the commanders. It's war. People just don't see all the stuff with Joe Biden. His car's called the Beast. All right? He was talking about these F-16 planes. F-16. That's 616. F's the sixth letter. That's 616. The alternate number of the Beast. The F-16 planes. You learn the code, you see that F is 6. You learn the Bible, you see that 616 is the alternate number of the beast. You make the connections. And then you see a 616 record. Wait, wait, that team can become 6 616 on the road. Boom. Let me go. Give me five minutes. All right, okay, they've got that. Oh, my God, they can go 1318 against this team. Revelation 1318 is about 666. Oh, my God, let me keep going. What? They can stay on 42 road wins. All right, done. Done. Usually when I code like that, when I'm being guided, it, it just hits. It hits. Because it's revelation that won't be stopped. Revelation won't be stopped. It won't be stopped. It's not going to be stopped. And if you think man wrote the Bible, and yes, it's definitely been somewhat rewritten or altered, but when it comes to the actual main story, we all know it. We all know it. That hasn't changed. We know it. Um, yeah, I told you all with Mahomes' injury so many times in the lives that he wasn't injured and the public are going to bet on the Bengals, which they did. Most of the money was on the Bengals because they were like, Burrow's never lost to Mahomes and then Mahomes is injured. I saw it all. I told you all with that. That was the clearer one. The 49ers and Eagles game was beyond tough. The Chiefs, I said there was nothing for the Bengals that I found major. The Chiefs was the best um, cold to hit, plus 110. Made that very clear. There was amazing riddles, 49ers, Eagles, and the Chiefs. Bengals, nothing. People don't pay attention to what comes out of my mouth half the time. Obama cars are the beast. Oh, no, yeah, his car right now for the president is the beast. 
So I guess, is, is he the Antichrist, Joseph? Joe Biden? Is he the Antichrist? Because he has the beast car? Uh, Roman Reigns last match on 128 with a 28 month and one day reign as champion. Brilliant. I like stuff like that, Gematria Shorts. I love durations. I adore durations. It's the most important element of coding, which hardly anybody uses. Durations followed by understanding the Fibonacci sequence, triangular numbers, pentagonal numbers, square root numbers, prime numbers. That comes second to me. And then third, if it's sports, I would say head-to-head -head records, uh, season records, coaches' records. And then I'd use a bit of gematria to back up all the numbers. Those people who are coding straight away from gematria Typing stuff in the calculator, the first thing you do, you ain't going to ever become good at coding the universe. You might understand and remember what certain words and the numerical value is, but Gematria is a cherry on the cake of a great code. All right? It's not the cake. The cake for me is the durations. All right? Durations are huge. Huge. And then you make all these wild connections. Queen Elizabeth died on Philadelphia Eagles owner's 71st birthday, the day the NFL season began, 9-8-2022. The Chiefs beat the Eagles on 10-3, exactly 71 weeks before the Super Bowl. 10-3, 103rd season. They're both 10-3 and in the regular season. That stuff is huge. Humongous. Right now, you might be like, yeah, but who does that benefit? Yeah, I'm still working on that, that element. Then you're at 71, the 20th prime. Is there any 20s, two zeros anywhere? All right, let me, let me look into that. But when you're typing in like Kansas City Chiefs equals this and Philadelphia Eagles equals this or just Eagles equals this or Chiefs equals this or KC equals this, it's like, oh, my goodness, you are just going to – you're begging. So what you're doing there, Gematria – Shorts with durations, with like the 128 and the 28 month and one day is, I love that. That's that's how I like to code. Durations. Durations, durations. They don't always hit, but they usually do. I am Satan. Hey, how are you doing, Satan? Um, Jane Sammy made up 11, 28, 2022. Um, Sammy Zane has this whole connection with Kevin Owens, like going all the way back to the Indies. Um, it's a crazy story what they've been through and they'll eventually reunite they always seem to reunite but if you want to know where the world's going watch WWE they give away so much they foreshadowed 9-11 when Hulk Hogan and Macho Man the Mega Powers said in a tag team match in a promo that they're going to watch the Twin Towers come crumbling down. Oh, yeah. Okay. They told us that in the 80s. And the biggest annoyance of me, I would say, right now in the world is people's belief system when it comes to coincidences. They don't exist. So the whole thing, what, the, what my friend said to me about Hogan and Macho Man foreshadowing 9-11 is, well, how many promos has Hulk Hogan and Macho Man given? How many? Like, have they always foreshadowed everything that's come out of their mouth? No, but Hogan was a member of New World Order, so was Macho Man. All right? They, they foreshadowed 9-11. They were in the NWO together. All before we even were hearing about the NWO, really, at a high level. So it's just the whole coincidence stuff. My codes, which I get right almost every day. How can it be a coincidence? Why don't people know the difference between a coincidence and a pattern? But we all know at this point, you'd be nine out of 10, whatever it is, whether you're coding sports or, or making major predictions with the future. If you're nine out of 10, they're going to call you out. They're going to say, oh, can't mean anything. If it was perfect, you'd be 10 out of 10. 
that's what you're dealing with. It's not worth it. You don't need to compete with those people. They're not going to look at your 90% right or 80% right or 70% right. They're going to look at the 10, 20, 30 wrong. Today, my code, Giannis, number 34, gets 34 points, and the books get their 34th season win. Well, it's Giannis, one of the best players in the league. All right? It's not a big shock, is it? That's all you're going to hear. Yeah, but there's 334s there, which I was talking about before. Yeah, but whatever. What does that even mean? It's like, all right. So does that mean in his next game he's going to get 35 points? No. No, because he wears number 34. He's super connected to 34. That's his main number. Well, when 36 game is even going to get 36. No, mate, I've just told you that's not how it works. Well, if 34 is so big, why don't they get 34 every game? Again, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. If he was going to get 34 points every game of the season, everybody would just bet on him 33 plus points. It's just nonsensical comments like that. Why I stay away from speaking with people now about it. I stay away. Um, I just tell them, if you want to know what I do, check my website out. I don't want to talk about this because you try and ridicule me, whatever I do, whatever I've called. Um, somebody said to me, what was it? The Euro 2020 final. They messaged me right before. They went, come on then, genius. Tell me who's taking all the penalties. I went, what? Tell me who's taking every penalty. Who, who's taking them all and who's going to miss? I said, are you kidding me? It's like, no, go on. You know everything. I, I don't know everything. Why have you got that in your head? My mum did one thing that pissed me off and I tried to laugh it off. She even said, all right, smarty pants, you know everything about numbers. And I'm like, no, I don't. I told her my best friend or one of my best friends, Buchan, his wife was about to give birth. And she was like, go on then. How much is the kid going to weigh? You know everything, don't you? I was like, mom, I, I don't know how much the kid's going to weigh. I'm not at that level. Like, go on, take a guess. And I was out by two pounds, two pounds. And she went, yeah, you got it wrong though. So happy. I love my mom. She's the greatest woman I've ever come across. And people telling me, all right, illusion. You All right, tell me winning lottery numbers. I can't be bothered anymore with this bullshit. I'm coding at a high level. I'm showing you we live in a coded reality. I get practically every sports pick right. I've done so many major events that I've predicted. But I ain't going to get it all right because I'm a man. I'm a regular guy who's just doing his best to wake people up to the fact we live in a coded reality. So I, who, who's, who's going to win the world championship? Who's going to win this? Who's going to win that? No, come on, leave me alone, please. If you want to know my predictions, get on my site and see what I do instead of asking me WhatsApp messages, emails, YouTube chat, comments. Like, Leave me alone, please. I don't know why I took the Cavs tonight. I don't know. Everyone on my site said Miami, didn't they? If you're on my site, they all said Miami. Uh, huge shout out to Riddler11, who has a Patreon. He's the best that I know at calling underdogs. I don't think he ever calls favorites. I go favorites most of the time. I'll be very honest. I do. I go with my gut, with my code. He calls underdogs, like consistently. And he's a really nice guy from Austria, consistently. And he always puts his codes on my website, which he doesn't have to do. But he, he has a lot of respect for me because I've been there for him many times when he needed me. I won't get into it, but he's a great guy. And he said Miami. Somebody else said Miami. I stayed away. I don't bet. I stayed away. I thought, okay, there's a lot of them doing Miami. And I just say, be careful with odds. Be careful. And they, I think they won by three. They won by three. Of course, a sweaty game. Like so many of them are. Give people an inch they want to take a country mile. It's so true. That's why now I don't go out of my way. I never send codes to people now. Um, I never send sports picks to anyone. If anyone wants my knowledge, watch me on YouTube for free. Go on my Twitter for free. Or if you want the next level knowledge, go on the website where there's 400 and some people sharing knowledge and not just Adam Edwards, a.k.a. The Illusion. Zach and his double D codes. I've been saying for ages, the guy's a mediocre coder. To have the knowledge that he's had for as long as he's had it, 
to be getting worse. Some are not right. You can, you can make accusations about who he is, who he works for, how he operates. That guy is, yes, he can code the news. He should stick to coding the news. He can code the news very well, which is surface stuff, I think, the news. Because, uh, again, you just put in the numbers together into a calculator. Uh, making predictions is how you're going to wake people up. And recently, his his predictions have been disgraceful. But he tells you all that he's amazing. He's a liar. He's a coward. He's called me out numerous times after supporting me. Yeah, he's told everyone he called the Chiefs to get to the Super Bowl. He calls, like, practically, he said the books, all right, gave amazing riddles for loads of other teams as well. So whatever happens at the end of that Super Bowl, he's going to be telling people that he called it. He'll literally call a player prop for every player in the squad and then do a live saying, there we go, if you would have got him at, at plus 1,400. Yeah, but no, that's not how it works, Zach. Not a very good coder or you intentionally deceiving people because it's cringeworthy. Or you find great finds and you don't know how to connect them. There's a lot of people in this community that make all these finds but they don't connect them with anything or they don't have a clear pick. They don't have a clear pick with it. Um, so they're making all these fines and, oh, that's interesting. Wow. What does it mean though? Like what's the significance of the find? Yeah. The, the guy's a joke and it, it's, it's all coming down for Zach now. Not that I wish negativity on people, but the way he's behaved in recent times, his level of coding, why would you support that guy? I don't get why you would. I don't know what he's helping you with unless the surface stuff at the very beginning. If you find him at the very, very beginning, which you will because YouTube are going to guide you to him, interestingly, not to me. You have to Google me and find me. With him, you'll find him. Um, you'll love him at the beginning. He's going to blow your mind. And that's why... He can lose hundreds of patrons and then he'll get hundreds of new ones that stumble across the knowledge by bullshitting them to get them in. And then they go and then he reels in more. He's just reeling them in. I don't do that. I back up what I do. My hit rate's outrageous, but I don't even bet. And I tell people that. He convinces people he bets. And then he tells people, wait, you can't bet in Washington State. Then he tells you he does. And then he done. Like He's just a liar, a compulsive liar. The books never had a chance. I said that at the beginning of the season and the Bills. Told you neither of them were winning it. I said, I know all the books and Brady Riddle. I know that he was born 8-3. And he can go 8-3 and three in Super Bowls. 83 is the 23rd prime. This is 23rd season. I knew a million things with Brady. I coded him to win Super Bowl 55. I was like, he ain't winning it. They're not going to let a guy born 8-3 become 8-3. and three. It's even the most... Naive person's going to question that, especially at 45. So I was like, no. I'm like, he's going to be done. He'll retire at the end of the season. I still think he will. All right? I said he would lose his last game in the uh, regular season, which he did against Arizona. And then the Dallas code to knock him out. So, and then the Bills, do you really think that they put too much? He was got raving on about the Bills. I don't know how he can't see through a trap at this point. I can help save you money by telling you who's not going to win. And loads of money went on the books and the bills, especially the bills. I said, the big favorite hardly ever wins that starts off as the big favorite. Boom. Secondly, you had the Buffalo shootings all over the place. There was DeMar Hamlin ritual all over the place. All right. The opening game involved Buffalo Bills. They were raving on about Josh Allen all this stuff, and then the Buffalo shootings were 514, and the Bulls had 514 all-time losses. Do you think they were going to let them win the Super Bowl and stay on 514 when the shootings were 514? No, 515, because Kobe Bryant was inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame, 515. Claydex, 515. Operation Warp Speed, 515. But he will rave on to naive people in his community saying, 
well, there's a Buffalo shootings. They were 5-4 in, and it was this duration from the Super Bowl, and they can stay on five of the 14 losses. And DeMar Hamlin, like, DeMar Hamlin, all right, the whole reason why he collapsed for the Bills is because the dollar bill is going to collapse. I told you all of that. The 2021 NBA Finals was the Suns against the Bucks. The Bucks, the dollar, the Suns, the Phoenix, the crypto. Lakers now playing at Crypto Arena. You, you had, uh, he's still doing it now, Zach telling people, LeBron's going to go, Six and six. I think he'll end up going to Cleveland again and, and playing with his son. No, told you all ages ago, he's staying four and six. 66.6%. Four and six, Biden, 46 president. All right. JFK assassinated at 46. Brady retired 46 days after the Pope's birthday. 199th pick, 46 prime. But he's like, no, I still think, I still think LeBron, look how good he is. He gets a big move. And I think he's going to win the NBA with his son. No, they won't do that. They won't let LeBron and his son win the NBA together. It's too ridiculous. Told you, if the average person will go, wait, what? They don't do it. You coded the books today, but they were minus phones a favor. I believe that's not very hard to predict they will win. I said Giannis, 30 plus points. My whole code was about 34. He scored 34 to get their 34th win of the season. And he wears number 34. All right. In play, they were down by six. You, Rudy, clearly on my website, don't know how to gamble. If you would have taken Giannis, the points, and books to win, that was, I checked it, it was plus 145. You didn't look for that, though, did you? It was plus 145 for the books and Giannis to win and, and Giannis to cover the points that I said. But you didn't look because you don't know how to bet. So if you tell me it was minus 400, that's easy. All right, why don't you go take every single penny you have in your account? Do you have four grand in your account? Go take out four grand, put it in your betting account and go find a minus 400 tomorrow and go win yourself $1,000. Tell me how it goes without coding. Go do it. Go, go risk four grand. You know what? Go risk eight grand and win two grand tomorrow. All right, go do it. And tell me how you do. So again, people, they come in the comments. They don't know what they're talking. They can't code. They can't gamble. They have hardly any knowledge. And that's the reality of a lot of people. You coded man's phones. I said Giannis. My whole code was about 34. The guy got 34 points. You want to ignore that. This is the people I'm dealing with. They don't have a clue. All right. Rudy, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Did you see my code for the Eagles and the Chiefs to both win and get there? Plus 250, did you catch that one? No, you didn't. You didn't, did you? So who's going to win the Super Bowl, Rudy? Who's going to win the Stanley Cup? Who's going to win the World Series? Tell me. This is the reality, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go soon because I told you my phone was going off. In two and a half years, and this is before seasons have begun, before seasons have begun, our tournaments have begun. Rudy, I don't want to go back and forth here. I don't know who you are, but you're clearly delusional and bitter. In two and a half years, I've called, listen, I've called two FA Cup final winners before the season began. I've called League Cup final winner. I've called NBA finals winner before the season began. I've called World Series winner. I've called the NHL. I've called snooker championships before they began, swimming championships before they began. I've called, um, what else have I got? There's so many more, it's outrageous. So many more. UFC. Big, big odds. Boxing, big, big odds. I've even called it a Royal Rumble winner. I've called telling you Eric Ten Hag at 40 to 1 would sign for Man United. I said Ronaldo would go to Man United, big odds. I said that Messi would go to PSG when everyone laughed at me, when he said, I'm never leaving Barcelona. Called all of that. This year, I called Gerard Sacking with the code. I called Tuchel Sacking the day he would get sacked with the code. All before, I've called MVPs. I called Jokic MVP back-to-back. -back. I called Giannis NBA Finals MVP. I called Steph Curry way before. I called Steph Curry plus 800 MVP in the All-Star game when everyone said it would be LeBron. All right? 
called the Queen's death. I called Dustin Diamond's death date five weeks before he died. All right, I could go on all day, all day with what I've predicted. Europa League, I called Villarreal to win it. Massive odds. So come in here, you called this. The books were down by six. Giannis got 34 points. Other day, the Warriors were minus 300, plus 600 in play. Miami Heat against the Celtics, all right? Plus 650 in play, came back and won, last play. You just can't bet. You don't have a clue, so don't bet. Of course, you're not going to take books minus 400 money line. You're not going to do that. I don't. I put in my code, hopefully this is an in-play bet, Giannis points. Don't you read properly? I know the average person on my website can't afford to be putting four grand on the team. I know that. But I know how these leagues work, mate, and you don't. So learn from me or piss off. Simple as that. Super Bowl 57 logo has the colors of the Eagles and the Chiefs. That's a great find. That's interesting. The Chiefs wear red. The Eagles wear green. I always talk about the four horsemen. The second horse is red. It's war. It's bloodshed. The fourth horseman is green. Is death. So you've got the war and the death. War connects to death. The colors are important. It's why the Rams wore yellow and blue. Real Madrid, yellow and blue. Golden State Warriors, yellow and blue. All right? Those two colors make you green, which is death. The Queen's last photograph, she was between two white horses wearing green. The white horse is the first horseman, which is the Antichrist. This is how deep it is. But the books were minus 400. My goodness, those people who just care about the gambling aspect of it and odds, watch what happens in the next year or so. Watch what happens. You're going to be in for the, a, a surreal shock. So these kinds of people will always exist. Sadly, not much you can do but present the knowledge and hope it's transferred. I know, bro. I, I try and focus on the positives, the people who really care, the people who want the sacred knowledge, who want the community, who want to see through the illusion, hence my name. The betting, I'm one of the best that there is. You know that. All of you in the chat know that. I've proven that now for three years. I've proven it. All sports, I've proven it. Day in, day out. You know that. Perfect codes. Watch my videos. Watch them all. Go on Twitter. Watch what I've called. I could retire today. Retire today. And I've called more things than most people ever will in their life. I ain't going to say I'm Nostradamus like Zach. Uh, outrageous, nonsensical comment like that. But that's the reality. There's always going to be people who do that. Wow, you called the books. I was saying it 30 minutes ago in the live. There's always going to be someone that's coming at you. Like, oh, what you do is easy. Well, again, why don't that guy put four grand tomorrow on the team and win a grand if it's that easy? If it's that easy, why don't you do it every day and see how well he does? Adam Danier, mate, did you watch my clip, mate? Um, wait, is this, is this my boy Dan from Australia? I told you I get contacted by hundreds of people daily. Is this Dan from Australia? Good eye, Dan. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah. Amazing. So if this is the Dan that I'm aware of, because, again, there's multiple Dans. If it's Dan from Australia, um, who has my official Instagram account, this guy's an inspiration to me. He looks out for me. He prays for me. He sends me amazing uh, links to watch. This guy's the real deal. And he even politely says, I know you get bombarded daily, but I want to share this with you. I'm thinking about you. This guy's a, just, if it's Dan who's friends with one of my best friends, Oz, uh, Lindsay, one of the nicest people that I've ever met, the connection I had with him, first time I met him, he was like my brother. We call each other brother. Hey, brother, like genuinely like brothers. And he's a special guy. He's now in India playing football. Um, and then Oz, I think, introduced Dan to my work. I think Dan enjoys my work. He's seen my um, organic spiritual journey that's led me to God, which I didn't have when I knew Oz. I don't think Oz, I'm not even sure. Dan, does Oz believe in God? I know it's more like a 
he's more like a Buddhist Indian, like peace and love type of guy. I've never spoken to Oz about Jesus or God because I'm all new to it. And um, I'm not sure if Oz were ever that religious, was he? It brought me back to God. That's amazing that this knowledge is bringing you back to God. This knowledge found, I found God through the knowledge. So it never brought me back. I never believed in God prior to that. Um, couldn't stand church and religion. I still can't stand church and religion. But this knowledge has led me to God, which is the greatest thing that's ever happened in my life. I apologize to everyone out there who I've done amazing things with. But the greatest thing that's ever happened in my life was finding God. It will never be beaten. And I'll let anyone know that. Um, so people always ask me, what's the greatest gift of this knowledge? Is it that you, you're making a living from it straight away? Is it making a living from it? Is it the intelligence? Is it... No, I found God. Can't be trumped. Will never be beaten. And if you're in the chat and you don't believe in God, that's absolutely fine. I don't judge anyone. I don't shit on people for not doing it. Zach Hubbard will shit on you for believing in God, which is interesting. Um, it's just the greatest gift that's happened to me in my life is, is finding, finding God for me. Because I have no fear of anything or anyone anymore. I'm not consumed by anything or anyone anymore. I just flow. And when I go, I go. Simple as that. This vessel of mine. Um, will the Super Bowl be connected to the World Cup? Yes. Pope Francis is Argentinian. The World Cup final was a day after his 86th birthday. Remember, Argentina won the World Cup in 86. And Super Bowl 57 is 57 days after his birthday. Again, I know the Pope's numbers inside out. Born Saturnalia, born 1217, 199th prime, which is the 46th prime. He was born 1936. Um, I, I can go on all day when it comes to your boy, Jorge Mario Bagoglio. Know his numbers inside out. 266 Pope, probably the last ever Pope, hopefully the last ever Pope. Hey, how was your day? The illusion as usual. Hey, how are you doing, Anthony? Coached an amazing kid. 11-year-old, uh, amazing session. Um, I went out for dinner. I went out for lunch. Told you my biggest thing that I enjoy to spend my money on is food. I did some coding. I had a workout. I spoke with my amazing mum. Um, she's excited to see me in April. Um, I made some edits to my book. Played a little bit on my keyboard. Now I'm doing this live stream. Once it's done, I'll try and lay down and not do anything. It's almost impossible. I'll probably read. I'll do a code. I'll respond to emails. It's very hard for me to shut off. Something I have to work on. When I'm with Kenya, I shut off. She's been a blessing for that. Because when I'm with Kenya, I'm not on my phone. I don't go on my computer. I ain't talking about numbers. I have no interest in sports. I'm just with her. So she's brought me that balance in my life. A good woman can definitely only be a good thing, to be honest. Well, it has been for me. Just finished a night class in college. What What do you... <laughs> it sucked. The, the, the colleges, mate, and university set up to just not inspire you you go there with this thirst for learning and you come out unfulfilled and disillusional with it you learn more from listening to one of my live streams than you probably just learned in that night class what what is it you're studying nothing like a good meal baby no they're in i, I love it like i love the thought of food eating it um then thinking about my dessert as soon as I finish my lunch, I'm thinking about my tea or, or dinner, depending on where you are in the world. Biggest, One of the biggest joys of my life is food. I'll enjoy it whilst I can when that third horseman famine appears. So, yeah, other than that, I ain't big. I love buying people dinner. I feel like every time I go out now, I buy the dinner. I enjoy it. I love seeing them enjoying the food. Um, now I 
don't have many outgoings. I gave my $300,000 house up to my amazing ex-wife. Don't have to worry about this lavish lifestyle anymore. So I have a bit of spare money. What do I do with it? I'll go out for dinner and buy people dinner. That's it. Don't really spend anything else. Not because I'm tight. Just what is there to buy? I'm not bothered about clothes. Really? All this, this is, God knows how old this, this hat Betsy got me from Costa Rica about two years ago. It's already losing all of its color from the sun. So again, what do I like to spend my money on? Food. That's why I stopped gambling as well, winning all that money. And my dad said, are you happy? What do you even do with that money? I said, no, I'm not happy. I don't know what I want to do with it. And then I convinced myself, well, okay, well, I can travel. I was like, wait, there's travel restrictions. So what am I even going to do with this money? So yeah, that's that's where I stand on on money. My my biggest joy as of now is buying food. Might sound sad to you all, but that's the reality. I had to do an essay on a serial killer. They want to push that thing, serial killer, and then make you feel like society is sick. And maybe maybe the guy sat across from you is a serial killer, and then the, all the Netflix shows, all the nice guys become serial killers. So don't trust a nice guy. I did a whole video. Remember live stream about being a nice guy. That if you're a nice guy, you, you're seen as a creep or weird. If you're nice, if you're a gentleman, you're a creep, you're weird. And if you're a jerk, you're like a legend. Girls love you. And that's basically how the system is, isn't it? Girls love a bad boy. It's just a joke. It's so backwards. Even elementary school is ridiculous, beyond ridiculous. That's where the programming begins. Uh, but the, the the sad thing is the primary school teachers are there because they absolutely love the kids. This is this is how it gets confused. So these primary school teachers, guys, and I know so many of them because I've worked in schools, and they're generally women in elementary and primary, probably 85%. They love the kids. The kids love them. It's just the system. I love the students at high school. All right, like my brothers and sisters, like crazy connection with the kids. If you guys ever witnessed me walk back to my old schools where I taught, it is a it's crazy the reaction I get. And I miss them so much. That's why I visit them. Or they ask me to visit and I'll pop in. And I'm still all super close with the directors, the owners, the coaches, the teachers. The, I know them all, the security. So I go visit them. And it sucks that I left, but I left because of the system. The system made me leave, not the students. The system's so corrupt, the curriculum's disgusting, and you just get programmed to follow orders. That's why hardly anyone goes it alone, like what I'm doing now, coaching company, teach English online, successful website, influencer. I don't have a boss, and people think I'm weird. It, why, how, what? What do you mean you work from home and wait, you've got your own schedule? Yeah, yeah. Because we're wired to believe we have to have a boss, that we have to be following orders. That's the way we are. Can I go to the bathroom, Mr. Adam? Can I have a drink, Mr. Adam? All right, to answer a question, you put your hand up. Just the system. I never really realized it. I just thought it was, okay, it benefits the teachers. All right, they've got to have a somewhat power and respect, which is going now, by the way. Students have no respect for the teachers because they can find everything on the internet. Um, so like, why do I have to learn this? I can just type it in Google. I know what Satan's done there. And I was going to do a video, and I still might. I want to absolutely destroy Grammarly. I want to do a whole video destroying Grammarly and why it's on every YouTube commercial. And why they want everyone to sign up to Grammarly, all right, to do the work for them. Doesn't help us that having AI do it for you. All right, I see right through Grammarly, why they promote it. Every commercial that I watch, Grammarly, sign up to Grammarly. You want the perfect essay? Grammarly. You want the perfect resume? Grammarly. Do it yourself. Make a mistake. All right. We're humans. We make errors. That's why I'm 
fine with missing codes every now and again. AI it ain't going to make an error when it comes to an essay. It's just not. But that's not your work. It's not your work. Where's the joy in handing in an essay that's been done by AI to get your stupid grade? I just stopped. I started seeing kids who could barely speak any English giving me perfect essays. Uh, that's why I said I had to change completely how um, I was sending out work. And then the school, one of the few things they had to go at me for, because I, I got the highest rate in statistics from the students and pe parents' feedback, was you're not teaching enough of the curriculum. And I told them, I said, well, look what I'm having to teach them and look how easy it is to get all the answers online. Yeah, but you're doing too many opinion-based essays. No, that's... Do you not get why I'm doing that, sir? Why? Because I know it's a topic that I've come up with that they can't just type in on the internet, like a comprehension check. I said, watch, go ahead. I said, pick a page out of this book. As I don't know, 60, 62. All right, okay, go. All right, now go, on, go online and type in page 62, my perspective answers. There you go. There's all your answers. Do you want me to hand them that for homework, which the curriculum says? Do you want me to do that so they can just get the answers? Take a screenshot, send it in the group chat, and I'll get 10 out of 10 so you guys look good. I, the way I speak now in these live streams, I was speaking to my directors and owners who I have a lot of respect for, and they're my friends. I speak like this. I said, do you want me to do that? Do you want me to hand them that homework? All right, fine by me. Makes my life easier. They'll all get 10s. I'm going to look great. But do you want that? Is that helping them? Uh, okay, well, maybe you could adapt it slightly. Okay. I said, do the students like what I'm doing? Yes. Are they learning? Yes. Are they getting good grades? Yes. So what's the problem? Yes, but the curriculum says that you need to go in this specific order. They wanted me to spend at one point six weeks on Shakespeare. About Romeo and Juliet, six weeks. Six weeks, three classes a week. That's 18 classes <coughs> about Romeo and Juliet. What do you want to know? All right, guys. You've got the Capulets, Montagues, you've got the wealthy family, the poor family. Juliet was wealthy. Romeo didn't have much money. They fell in love. She was really young. She was 13. He was 18. That was a bit strange. And basically, they fall in love. The family don't want them to get together. So they kill themselves. It's teenage suicide. What more do you want to know? I had to drag that out. So I was like, I'll tell them I could teach Romeo and Juliet in one class. And then what, what did I do? I said, all right, I'm going to talk about Romeo and Juliet. I know they're like, oh, again. I'm like, yeah, but listen, this time you're going to write a version of Romeo and Juliet, how it would have been if they had cell phones, if they could contact each other with cell phones and social media. Would it have been so extreme? <clears throat> Would they have taken their own lives? So you guys, I want you to write a modern day Romeo and Juliet. And then together, we're going to put together a play, modern day version. They're like, oh, okay. All right. Because they're being creative then. They can't find it online. So I had to come up constantly week in, week out with creative ways for them to learn. And people didn't like it in regards to the school who can't, people telling you how to teach who've never taught. People in this chat every now and again trying to tell me out a code or, oh, you, you said this team, big deal, who, who don't know anything. It can just get annoying um, at times. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go it on my own. So when I teach English online, I plan the lessons, all right? It's me. I go with the flow. I ask, hey, what do you want to learn? All right, okay, I'll do that for you. See you on Wednesday. I ain't following a curriculum. Screw that. 
and anyone who thinks that Shakespeare, who never existed, by the way, wrote Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, Hamlet, and every other play that he wrote, one guy. That one person did that. Comical. I also just finished Foundations of Corrections, which was ridiculous. Oh, mate. Yeah, the bell tells you where to go, like a prison. I see it more as military than prison. It's more military. You follow orders. If you don't, you get punished. It's similar to a prison, isn't it? Prison, prison is military. You're just not behind bars. But you're risking your life more as a soldier than a prisoner. And I bet, to be honest with you, again, because you've watched all these TV shows, and I don't know because I've never been in jail, but do you reckon these prisons are as bad as you think? I see it as they go there, they get free food, they're playing pool, some of them have video games. Yeah, there'll be a couple of scraps because there'll be a few people losing their mind in a cell. But do you really think, you watch all these shows and they're in prison. There was a show growing up in England called Bad Girls. So they're all killing each other and, and knocking each other out every day. I think a lot of them in prison who've been there multiple times, they enjoy it. They go on the outside world. They can't find a job. They've got a criminal record. They're homeless. All right, I'll get arrested again. I get three meals a day. I've got a bed. I've got shelter. I get to work out one hour, which I probably won't even do if I was out in the real world. I'd be too knackered because I'd be starving. I'm going to have friends. So they build up these prisons like you go to prison. Oh, God, you're going to get killed. You're never going to come out. How many people have actually gone in prison and not come out? It's just more often than not they go back in because it's better for them in prison than it is in the real world. It's been set up that way. And that's why private prisons are billion-dollar industries. I've studied all of this. Private prisons are billion-dollar industries. They're basically resorts. If you own a resort, you want it to be full capacity. You don't want your resort or your hotel to be empty. That's why they'll arrest people for nothing. That's why they made things like marijuana illegal, so it's very easy to arrest people. And now they've legalized it, and they'll make something else ridiculous that's illegal and put you in jail. Because the justice system should be called the injustice system. It's outrageous. You do not want to be there. I don't care what they put on TV shows and movies. You don't want to be in jail. I, of course you don't. But do you think the way they present all of these prisons from TV shows that you get stabbed, that they're all taking drugs and all of that? I don't think it's as bad as they make out in every prison. There'll be certain ones, yeah, the prison wardens will be battering them for no reason. It's just... The amount of times that people go to prison, get released, go back, get released, go back, it's almost like they want to be there, to be honest. But I've never been in prison. I'm just saying whatever the... Again, I live in Mexico. Nearly everyone I spoke to said, don't go there, you'll get killed, you'll, you'll uh, get everything stolen from you, the cartel will come for you. They will be deadly serious to me. And nothing's happened like that in eight years. It's the best place I've ever lived. And the only reason they had that mindset was the media. That's it. I've had a friend. I'm not going to say his name. I've had a couple, actually, who've gone in prison. I said, Gee, how bad was it? Fine. A bit scary at the beginning. And then you become friends with a few people. Keep your head down. And then... Before you know it, I was out. He was in like, I'm not going to say his name, like six months. I won't say what he did. It wasn't anything major, but let's just say it was a bit of a scam what he did. Shouldn't have done it. And he got caught. A lot of people attempt this particular scam and get away with it. I'm not going to say anymore. And uh, he said, yeah, I was scared shitless at the beginning. He said, after a while, they just, they leave you to It's like with the cartel. They don't just come for you. The cartel won't just grab you. You've got to be part of a family member or you've got to owe them money or you've got to be in their territory. 
They don't just grab a guy from Costco, leaving Costco and throw you in the back of the car, some random guy, for the sake of doing it. You know what I mean? If you guys have any personal stories with prison, feel free to share them. Your name's Adam. My name is Andy. What's your God's name? Mate, Sam's 8380 in Vancouver, Canada. What's your God's name? I, I know Adam gets you 26 and you're actually like God. Adam's obviously the first man on earth. But what do you mean by my God's name? I'm confused by that. But I'll answer it if I understand the question. I've never been to Norway. I'd love to know what the prisons are like. From what I've heard about Scandinavia, it's absolutely beautiful and expensive. Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark. Beautiful, expensive, beautiful women. Very active. And again, I'm going off people who visited there. I'm not going off TV shows. My friend Benedicta, who's Norwegian, she's a very honest girl. Uh, that's what she said. And then I've got loads of other friends from those different places. I'm, I'm lucky that I have friends all over the world. Like, I could practically, when I go to Europe, to see all my family in England, I could go stay at friends in Madrid, in Paris, in Rome, in Latvia. Let me think of some of my other friends. Um, what is it? Warsaw, Ireland, Wales, Scotland, any of them I can go stay at. Um, like, I bet somebody like Hans, for example, who lives in Denmark, it's, he'd be like, I'll oh, come stay with me. I'm thankful for that. Um, the US, practically every state I've got friends, Australia. Uh, somebody who was inviting me to Africa the other day, wasn't they? I don't know who they are, but I'd love to go to Africa. I've been to prison four times. It's a laugh, a break, <laughs> a break from the world. So this is what I mean. Like Some people will tell you that prison's like, it ain't bad. So we play pool, we, we, we eat. Yes, yeah, sometimes you can get in a bit of trouble, but it's only if you're going out of your way, it seems, to get in trouble. Yeah, someone might come over and like punch you in the face just to prove a point. Um, but that can happen anywhere. I, I, I've been punched in the face twice on a football field. One of them was the most comical thing ever. Um, I'll tell you the story. I've got loads of funny stories, haven't I? I've been punched twice in the face, and both occasions, the referee didn't see it conveniently. So one of them, best shower I've ever taken in my life. Is there any significance being named after someone in the Bible? It's hard to say. I don't. I, I wasn't named after Adam in regards to Adam and Eve. I was named after Adam Faith a musician, but look at his last name's Faith. Um, I don't know how that all works. I think everything happens for a reason. Then There may be something to it. But all right, I was playing this football game. I was dominating. And there was this Asian center half, big guy, 6'2". Um, decent enough footballer, but I was ruining him. And he was doing all this stuff to me, like elbowing me and... and trying to get in my head and all sorts of stuff. And then I had my back to him, but there were no play going on around me. I think it was like we were defending or whatever. And I had my back to him. I'm just watching what's going on, thinking, right, where can I move? What space can I move into? He's just come round and he's popped me, boom, right in my nose, out of nowhere. I've gone, what the heck? He jumped on the floor. This was pure comedy, almost, like WWE, where it's like they pretend that they've been hit by a steel chair. He's punched me right in the nose, jumped on the floor, holding his nose, and a riot kicked off. They thought I punched him. I never got sent off because nobody saw anything. I got punched in the nose, all right, and he's on the floor. So it's just outrageous what people... <laughs> do and how this world really is it's, it's somewhat comical like really really punched me in my nose man like for nothing just for being better than him how that's it's, it's very pathetic that he did that did I tell you the story when I had to uh, hey how you doing Michael God does win already won baby 
Prison is full of small time, nothing crime. Yeah, I think in general, yeah, but they make you seem like everyone in there is a murderer. Did I tell you about the guy in England who, as a dare, as a dare, he had to steal a milk bottle from somebody's garden and the police arrested him and he's had it on his record ever since for theft. And um, oh, what's it called when you trespass in? Trespassing and theft on his record, stole a bottle of milk for banter, for a dare, didn't even drink it. Um, and they caught him doing it. So, yeah, I, I would say most prisons, it's petty crime. It's, it's stealing. It's going to your local Asda and stealing a freaking flapjack. And you go, son. All right. It's drug possession. I'm not saying that's small, but do you know what I mean? But people think in prison, they're all full of murderers. They're all going to kill you. No. No, I don't think that is the case at all. At all. So, yeah, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, I had to send a report to the FA, the Football Association, when I played for Geisley. There was a guy for Thackley. Again, big centre-half. Most centre-halves are decent, like, build, especially at a good level. And I was killing him in this game, ruining him. And he, first thing he did, he put his stud down my Achilles. And I was like, ah, He's like, there, there you go, you little twat. So I had long hair at the time. He kept calling me a long-haired twat and little twat and all sorts of stuff. I'm like, wait, this, this, is, this is annoying. My dad was there. So I remember my dad was like saying, ads, don't let him get in your head, son. I'm like, it's hard, man. Like In my head, I'm thinking, this is hard. Like Then he was getting my armpit hair and he was ripping my armpit hair. I'm like, this is, I've not come across this before. And he spat on me. He spat on me. Then he pulled, because I had long hair, like I said, he pulled the back of my hair, but not too far to the point where he got, he just, he got my hair really close. He was man marking me and he ripped my hair. I went, how do you like that, you long hair twat? And whispered in my ear. All right. So I'm thinking, right, I think I need to speak to my coach here to go in a different position, like go out wide. I was playing as a striker. I could play anywhere. Like, maybe put me out wide where this guy can't man mark me. And I thought, no. No, I'm going to stay with him. And then he came round. He got his hand like this. This is disgusting what he did. And again, should have been arrested for what he did here. He got his hand like that and he grabbed my bollocks beyond a joke, grabbed my bollocks and twisted them. I remember for like three days, I felt like I couldn't breathe. Twisted my bollocks, like, 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 oh, I was like, oh. Then, then that was my head gone. And I'm going to say something that I did. And again, uh, there's probably some muppet that's going to take a, a video of this and, and call me disgusting. But I did it. I just had enough. I, uh, uh, it's a bit dirty. It's one of the worst things you can do to people. But I, I regret it, but I did it. Spat in his face. Awful. One of the worst things you can do to a person, in my opinion. And I, I regret doing it, but all the stuff you were doing to me, I, I spat in his face. And then I went full blown Adam beast mode. I've told you when I snap, because I was just taking it. I was taking it off him, like whatever. Maybe it's part of the game, semi pro, whatever. And then I was taking it and taking it and taking it. And then I just, I just snapped at him. And then in that game, I'm so happy my dad was there. One of my best mates, Stephen Henderson. We won 1-0. I scored a Decanio volley right towards the end. We won 1-0, my goal. I remember going up to him after the game. Went, have some of that, you silly. And I'm not going to say what I said. And he didn't say anything. He just put his head down. So the whole game, he was trying to just get in my head so much. And he did to the point where, and when I did the in his face, his fans saw it. Screaming at the linesman. You see what that number 11 just did? He's just spat in our centre half space. And I'm thinking, wait, he's spat in my face. He's twisted my bollocks. He's ripped hairs out of my armpits. He's tried to snap my Achilles. He stood on my toe. Every other thing that he could have done, he was elbowing my spine. Uh, but these, these fans, usually old fans watching semi-pro, screamed. 
linesman ref didn't see anything. But I'll never forget Liam Robinson. He cut it. He got to the byline. He whipped it back on his weaker left foot. I came in from like deep, came in from deep and decanioed it in the far corner. It was outrageous strike. And my dad was bang on pretty well. It won't, the goal was there. My dad was like this side. So I ran over. I'll never forget that moment because he, he tried to just, he wanted me to give up. And I was close to going to play on the wing, wasn't I? And I didn't. I said, no, I'm staying here. So, yeah, that's the worst thing I've ever done on a football field is spat in that guy's face because he did every other thing to me. I didn't want to punch him or hit him or anything. And after that, I just I became just insane. Just ready. I Just ready. Come on, do something else to me. I was just ready to go. Anyway, my dad used to coach and I used to help him and I got put as a quarterback to help. Some varsity D lineman hit me so hard without equipment on me. I thought it took years off my life. It may have done. When you get smashed, man, and you feel that wind come out of you, it, it probably does something to your internal organs, mate. Um, I've taken a few big hits. I'll tell you another personal story that we did in my basement. Um, yeah, I, I get that type of chai guy. I'd rather get punched in the face than spat on. 100%. But you've got to understand what I was going through in that game, mate. What he was doing to me. Like every, every 20, 30 seconds. Um, I probably should have just nutted him, to be honest. But then I get a three-game ban, let my team down and all of that. When I did this, when I spat, I looked around and I'm not dumb. I saw where the ref were and the linesman. It's very easy to get away with. But yeah, I would never do that in, ever again to anyone. But my friends are all athletic and stuff and pretty hard. I had a big basement, my mum's house, huge basement and a ping pong table and pool table, darts board. We used to all party there all the time. We decided to set up a boxing club and uh, none of us were boxers. Like we, we weren't trained boxers. We watched this show called, I think it was called Wild Cards or something. These amateur boxers or semi-pro boxers. And we decided to set up a boxing club in my basement. So we had it, we bought all the gloves. We all had like there was a um there were no ring or anything like that. But you had the uh we had the gloves and we were all athletic in good shape. And some of the punches we were we were giving each other. I got my nose smashed open numerous times. So, like the buggers, the snot just flew out of my nose. My head got smashed up against the wall, but we all knew what we were doing. It's, it's crazy. I would never do anything like this now. It's, it's somewhat like animalistic. It's, it's not, but the competitive juices and all of that. And we were just like, I remember one guy, he punched me in my kidney. So going back to what you were saying, he punched me in my kidney and I went, Ugh. I literally felt like I'm never going to take another deep breath again in my life. I think that's the worst I've ever been winded when I got punched in my kidney, full blown by a strong guy. Boom. That's the worst I've ever been winded. It's scary when you get winded, really scary. Um, does the God you found have a name? There are many gods, say the Bible. I believe there's one, the creator, and maybe I'll start using the term creator. There's one creator who created this universe, created everything, including Satan. And I believe God's the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. So maybe Jesus Christ, the God, the Holy Spirit. I think there's demigods, loads of them, demigods and demons and angels. But there's ultimately one creator who will have the final say and i know people say his name's not jesus christ Yeshua, or whatever else i don't know how important that is it may be significantly important for a lot of people for me i just believe there's one ultimate creator and i believe in jesus christ the whole story of jesus christ 
Um, some guy named Robbie Goodwin, he is my worst enemy. He was pitching and he threw a fastball and it hit my femur, which made me be out for junior season. That that sucks. My brother threw a golf club at my shin because I was beating him at pitch and put. Not even real golf. It's that 18 hole. If you're six plus six plus six, 18 hole pitch and put. Like each thing was about 20 yards, very simple. Some were slightly harder, uphill or downhill. Most of it was flat. Halfway through, he was having a nightmare. You know, if you've ever played pitch and put, if you've ever played golf, if you miss a few easy puts and you have any level of like competitiveness in you, if you miss a few puts, it can ruin you. It can anger you. I'm on 8.24 cut. No way. I'm on 8.24. 4,000 subs the day I said that the Hornets would drop to 824 in that conference. And now I've got 824, Kobe Bryant Day, Michael Jordan's Hornets who inducted him. I love these crazy sinks. So I've got the 824, I've got my Kobe Bryant numbers. I do a perfect NBA code again. Cheers, Kobe. Kobe's had a major influence on my life. He was a huge reason I woke up. He's a huge reason why I can code at the level I code. It's a huge reason why I know so much about Revelation. Kobe Bryant, I loved you in LA. I watched you numerous times. You're somewhat of a hero of mine. But you've had a huge say in my life, Kobe, whether you're alive or not. Miles, who knows? Um... But yeah, anyway, going back to my brother, he threw a club at my shin. Don't know how it didn't snap me. So I don't have big legs at all. Another time he tried to throw a table tennis bat at my head. I ducked. It left a hole in the wall. That got my head. I'm knocked out all day long. The one thing that my brother did to me that I 100% deserved was... There was some ice cream in the freezer, which I knew was his. And when I was younger, I was a bit like, did whatever I wanted, spoiled, didn't care, talked my way out of anything, took his ice cream. And he knew that. And he saw the, <laughs> he saw the ice cream around my mouth. Have you took my ice cream? So my brother, John, is so hard. Like, he's so hard, man, but I didn't care. So hard, tough, crazy hard. You don't want to fight him. Looks like Brock Lesnar. It's funny, because then there's, like, someone like me. He used to call me, like, Shawn Michaels or CM Punk. He's like Brock Lesnar. And I took his ice cream, which I knew was his, and he got a tablespoon, metal tablespoon, right? I do skip leg day. I'll always have tiny legs, I think. I've got decent enough uh, quads, but my calves are non-existent. Got Brady legs. So it gets this spoon, and he's throwing it at me, like just like that. And as soon as he threw it, I knew I couldn't get out of the way. He was close enough where I, cu I couldn't react. And this spoon, I still got a scar on my lip. Barely, barely visible, unless I do that. He's thrown this metal spoon because I took his ice cream and he shattered my lip, like split it in two. So my dad was furious because it was late at night and he had to take me to the Bradford Royal Infirmary. And we were in there for hours. And he's asking me questions. I can't fucking talk because my mouth's like, uh, uh, uh. Adam, did you take John's ice cream? I told you that was John's. Uh, uh. Uh, I sounded Down syndrome. No offense to Down syndromes, but I sounded Down syndrome. I was like, <laughs> it's like, Adam, I know you took his ice cream. And John was like, yeah, dad. He went, John, you be quiet. Look what you've done to your brother's lip. And I'm like, <laughs> he went, you shut up as well, Adam. Because he was furious. He was knackered after work. He's gone to the hospital. It's a nightmare in hospitals in England. And, uh, I definitely deserve to get my lip smashed open by my brother for taking his ice cream. Um, because I knew what I was doing. I knew, <laughs> I, knew he, I knew he was going to get angry as well. Just, I wanted the ice cream. I took it. 
Uh, I better go. I've told you I, I should have gone like uh, an hour ago. Um, but yeah, take care. And again, to that guy earlier who said, well, oh, the books were the odds. Go, go find those odds every day and bet, mate. And uh, let me know when you buy your mansion and your Ferrari, okay? Let me know. Let me know when you can't call, call exactly how many points a player is going to score in a game as well. All right. 205, baby. I'm off. Take care, Anthony. Much love to you, your family. Good night. Tank the try guy. PMC Shirigo. The next game had stoppage at 3-2-2 in overtime and the score was 9-11. Brilliant find. Brilliant find. This stuff happens all the time. Yeah, guys, follow Gematria Shorts. Just check him out. Give him a chance. If you like his work, great. If you don't, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to, you know what, before I go, I'm going to type his thing in, see if I can sub to him. Gematria Shorts. Let's have a look at him. All right. Wait, I'm typing that in, and it's just, I'm not finding a site. How can I be more specific with this? I type in Gematria Shorts, and the Shorts these days is just those uh, short videos on a particular topic. So there's loads of little short videos talking about Gematria. Is there Roman Reigns' next loss will be his 322nd loss? That's outrageous. Wow, it, it might get that then around. Remember, Super Bowl 57 leaves 322 days left in the year. He's on 321 losses. Super Bowl 56 left 321 days left in the year. Roman Reigns played football high level, really high level at college, just like Dwayne Johnson, who doesn't have a Johnson. Right, that means he might be dropping that belt then around the Super Bowl. Genius. The flavor was uh, strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla, Nap Napolitan, whatever it's called. It was that. As I remember, we used to get that a lot. My favorite's mint chocolate chip. A lot of people don't like that. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? I like uh, Dolce de Leche as well. But I like most. But mint chocolate chip, I, I enjoy. Anyway, where's this Gematria Shorts? Do you, wh what do I type in? I've typed in Gematria Shorts. And it's not leading me to a particular site. It's like 7.6 million views, ABC News. It's just leading me to pages where they want me to go. You know what I mean? I stay away. I stay far away. Where can I find you, brother? Do you have a link? What's your Twitter, Adam? Let me find it. I'm close to 9,000 on that. Not that it really makes a difference. I don't know how many of them are bots. That, that's my uh, Twitter. Check today post, last 24 hours. Um, do you have a link, bro? Gematria Shorts. How do I check the 24 hours? I'm Mr. YouTube guy that people call me now. I, I don't even know how it even works, so. They sent me an email telling me to uh, make shorts and I could make more money. I'm not doing the shorts. LeBron James and the LA Lakers are being tragically dismissed. Be quiet. Tragic. There's nothing tragic about a basketball game unless somebody actually does drop dead. Where are you, bro? I can't find him. This is annoying. No, no, I'm going to go on my phone and be bombarded with messages. What time is it? Oh, my God, it's nearly 11 p.m. This is a joke. Slipknot have a song called Gematria, the killing name, don't they? I can't really help you, Gematria Shorts, if I can't find your actual page. Um... But you clearly know a lot about wrestling, which I still find interesting. I just don't watch. Gematria Shorts, my email's in the description. 
if you want to email me your link, I'll share it on my website. If you want to go on my website, you can do that as well. Type, oh God, mate, if I type Roman Reigns, WWE champion, I'm going to get a million videos. I'm going to have to put Gematria shorts followed by that. I found him. I found him, I, I think. This is tragic. He has no likes. I'm, there you go. I've just liked. I've just become your first like. I've just subscribed to you. I've just subscribed. I think this is the link. Because Roman Reigns wears that God t-shirt, which I talked about. Greatness on a different level, I think. He's got the G-O-D. He's playing the role of God. It's this. Is that the link? Do you match your shorts? I really have to go. Just trying to be nice to you. Seem like a good guy. Is that the link? I don't want to like put the wrong link there. Just tell me if that's the right link so I can go. <sighs> and I'll, I'll watch some of your stuff and I'll share it for you. And we'll keep an eye on Roman getting that 320 second loss. He's had this massive unbeaten run, hasn't he, as a singles performer. Now we know why, because of you, the 3-2-1. He's going to get that 3-2-2 probably at WrestleMania around the Super Bowl. Wow. Is that the video, bro? Please tell me yes so I can go. Please. All right. Hey, how are you doing, brother? I gave you a big shout-out earlier. This is Riddler 11, amazing coder who calls underdogs all the time in the NBA. He's one of the very best with the NBA, in my opinion. And he called the Heat to upset the Cavs. And he does it every day. It's not perfect. None of us are. But what he does better than me is he calls dogs and big ones. I don't often do that. Um, he's great. Great guy. Loves his cats. Loves his music. Just brilliant guy, and he uh, he shares his work on my website, and he doesn't have to do that at all. I don't ask him to do it; he just does it, and he, he always sends me nice messages, and he sends me tips, which he really doesn't have to send because he does enough for that website with his codes. So anyway, I, th I think this is the guy, Jumatria Shorts. I think I've I've nailed it with the video. Correct score. Soccer, 7 out of 10. That's insane, mate. Yeah, check him out. Riddler11 has got a Patreon. If, you, if you're interested in gambling, that's he codes. All right, I'm going to watch your stuff after I deal with all my uh, WhatsApp messages. Cheers, guys. Sorry, um, Michael. I've got to go now. I've been going two hours, 13 minutes. Um, and it's getting late, my end, and I've been non-stop all day once again. So much love to you all. Hope you learned something today. I hope you enjoyed a few of those personal stories. I like sharing the personal ones. You know what I mean? The organic stuff, talking about myself, my my uh, youth and stuff like that. But you can relate to more than the numbers if you don't understand the numbers. Right, and uh, yeah, if you want to check out my Twitter, I only post a few times a day. I don't scroll through looking at other people's Twitters. I have no interest doing that. My Twitter's there. But if you like what I do, you're probably already there anyway. All right, guys. Take care. Much love and have a wonderfully blessed evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are in the world, okay? And check out Gematria Shorts. The link is... In the comments, the most recent link that I shared. Okay. Cheers. Much love. I'm going to leave with 31 likes because I was born on my dad's 31st birthday back in 1986, baby. Woo! -hoo!